Time Cop, science fiction time traveling action movie released in 1994 about a top secret organization dedicated to protecting the temporal time stream, where cops must defeat criminals who travel back to the past to commit unlawful acts. Jean-Claude Van Damme stars as Max Walker, a federal agent who lives in the futuristic world of 2004, where time travel has now become a reality. All I can say is that I mustn't have been paying attention that day. All I remember about 2004 was that milkshake song about bringing all the boys to the yard. I guess I must have missed the whole time traveling conspiracy. Anyway, Walker is a tough, no-nonsense cop whose wife was tragically murdered 10 years earlier in 1994. And when an evil senate called McComb starts meddling with the past for his own evil deeds, it becomes apparent that he was responsible for Walker's wife's death. Once back in 1994, Walker has the opportunity to change the events of that fateful night. But will he take it? Time Cop is just a fun 1990s rom. It's pretty much what you'll get if you'll mix The Terminator and Demolition Man and throw in Jean-Claude Van Damme for good measure. So today we are going to look into 10 things that you didn't know about Time Cop. As always, let's check it out. Number 10, based on a comic. Time Cop was based on a comic book created by Mike Richardson, who incidentally founded Dark Horse Comics, which also gave us Hellboy, Sin City, and the popular Aliens comics. The Time Cop saga was originally a three-part story called Time Cop, A Man Out of Time, and was published as part of the Dark Horse anthology series in 1992. Co-written by fellow comic book writer Mark Verheiden, Time Cop Man Out of Time tells the story of Max Walker, who is a time cop sent back to the 1930s to an African diamond mine to stop a time traveler and his robotic sidekick from robbing the mine. Richardson and Verheiden teamed up to develop their Time Cop comic into a movie, with them working on the story and screenplay. There is some ambiguity as to whether or not the movie Time Cop is a byproduct of the comic, or if the comic is a byproduct of the movie. I think this is down to the fact that when the Time Cop movie was released, Richardson and Verheiden would go on to release a two-part Time Cop comic book. One that was more faithful to the film. Also, Mike Richardson created the Mask comic book as well. So we may as well add that to the list. The mind that gave us Time Cop also gave us the mask. <laughs> Who would have thought? Two completely different stories. Just goes to show he's true genius. Number nine, Time Cop was produced by Sam Raimi. Time Cop had some great talent on board to bring this futuristic story onto the big screen, as it was directed by Peter Hymas, who at that stage had directed two popular science fiction movies, with Outland, or as I like to call it, Sean Connery in Space, and 2010, the criminally underrated sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey. However, interestingly enough, Time Cop was produced by Sam Raimi. Now, when we think of Raimi's contributions to cinema, we no doubt think of his Evil Dead trilogy and Spider-Man trilogy. But yeah, I guess we can add producing Time Cop to his efforts. Raimi had an interest in making comic book movies, as he was a massive comic book fan, of which started with the comic book-esque Darkman, which would lead up to Spider-Man. So maybe he produced Time Cop because of its comic book origins. For all we know, Time Cop was another step up the ladder for him for eventually directing Spider-Man. A sort of in-between project sitting in the middle of Darkman and the Web Slinger series. Number 8. Time Cop beat the Shawshank Redemption in the box office. Now if you hold up the Shawshank Redemption and Time Cop to any film historian or critic or heck, maybe even your average movie fan and ask which one is the better movie, chances are they are going to say the Shawshank Redemption. As to be fair, the movie has been hailed as a masterpiece. However, the Shawshank Redemption and Time Cop were both released in the later part of September 1994, to which Time Cop actually beat the Shawshank Redemption. 
For its first two weeks of being released, Time Cop sat at the number one spot in the box office and would go on to make $101.6 million in the box office, as opposed to Shawshank, which made $58.3 million. Which is interesting, as Shawshank would go on to be a movie highly respected by movie connoisseurs, whereas Time Cop was looked down on as being a dumb, silly action movie. But then again, it also might come down to marketing. After all, look at the movie's posters. You got Time Cop, which says exactly what you're going to get. A cop who travels in time. Then the Shawshank Redemption, and if you've never heard of it before, it's like, huh? What is this about anyway? What's with that guy standing in the rain? He's probably going to get a cold. It has since been said that part of the box office downfall of Shawshank Redemption is its name, as moviegoers thought that it sounded weird and didn't know what it meant. Number 7. The Music of Time Cop The music for Time Cop was written by composer Mark Isham, who provides an enthusiastic, upbeat score that keeps up with the movie's action. It very much sounds like what you would expect an action movie score from the 90s to sound like, but that's a good thing, as it goes with the movie's atmosphere. Isham had previously scored the action movie Point Break, along with the surreal live-action co-animation movie Cool World, and would go on to score Blade. So his achievements were actually an important part of 1990s cinema. However, interestingly, the score for the movie was actually conducted by Chicago-based musician Robert Lamb. Number 6. Video Game So in 1995, there was a video game adaptation released for Time Cop on the Super Nintendo. But you wouldn't guess it by looking at the game's artwork, as Max Walker looks more like Cyclops from X-Men. In fact, even in the comics, Walker wore an eye visor. I guess he didn't in the movie because they wanted to show off Van Damme. A similar thing that happened with Sylvester Stallone in the Judge Dredd movie just one year later. Anyway, the game actually acts as a sequel to the movie, where Walker is out to stop the inventor of time travel and to right the wrongs that time travel has caused in the past, with the action taking place from a futuristic Los Angeles to World War II Europe. And the game uses that realistic style of graphics that were popular at the time. It's just your basic side-scroller, and pretty much became largely forgotten. Number 5. Van Damme's Highest Grossing Film Van Damme was a leading action movie star of the early 90s, with his physical strength and capabilities up there with the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. And although his popularity started to take off with the likes of Bloodsport, Kickboxer, Universal Soldier and Hard Target, his popularity peaked with Time Cop, as Time Cop is still to this day his highest grossing movie that he has starred in. However, his future projects never matched the success of Time Cop, although many would argue that Time Cop isn't his best movie. In the years after Time Cop, he starred in other movies that just didn't do as well, such as Street Fighter and The Quest, where his popularity started to dwindle. However, in later years, his career would have a comeback with the likes of JCVD and The Expendables 2. And his career is looked back upon respectfully as being one of the best movie tough guys of his time. But despite all this, it seemed that when Time Cop came out, back in those glorious days of 1994, that people just couldn't get enough of the muscles from Brussels. Number 4. Sudden Death Went Straight Into Production Because of Time Cop Time Cop was made back-to-back -back with fellow Van Damme action movie Sudden Death, which was also directed by Time Cop's director, Peter Hymas. Hymas explains that the reason that Sudden Death came about was because the test screens for Time Cop were doing so well, or as he put it, through the roof, it became clear that it was going to be a hit. So to continue this string of newfound success, Universal Pictures wanted Van Damme and Hymas to team up as soon as possible to work on another action epic. So the result of that was Sudden Death, where Van Damme must take on terrorists at a sports arena. So Van Damme and Hymas literally went from Time Cop straight to Sudden Death. Sadly though, Sudden Death didn't perform as well as Time Cop, despite many people arguing it's one of Van Damme's best movies, if not his best. So it's a shame that the movie didn't perform as well, which might have been because of Time Cop's poor reviews from critics. But either way, sadly, Sudden Death didn't fully live up to its box office potential. Apparently at that time, Van Damme had a free picture deal with Universal Pictures, consisting of Time Cop, Sudden Death, and the third film that he would go on to make, The Quest. 
And yeah, that didn't really go down too well and marked the end of his involvement with Universal, where he would go on to make movies with Columbia TriStar. Number three, there was a straight to DVD sequel. Director Peter Hymer said that he never would have done a sequel to Time Cop, as he wouldn't want to just repeat the same thing all over again. However, that didn't stop a sequel from happening anyway, as in 2003 there was a straight-to-video sequel called Time Cop 2 The Berlin Decision. This time the story focuses on fellow Time Cop, Ryan Chang, played by Jason Scott Lee, who is probably best known for playing Bruce Lee in the bio movie Dragon. Chang must stop a fellow Time Enforcement Commission agent who plans on righting all the wrongs of the past and travels back to 1940s Berlin to kill Hitler. Which is actually a pretty good premise and addresses the age-old question when it comes to time travel. If you could travel back in time, would you kill Hitler? The sequel had some interesting ideas but was forgettable and I felt that it had a made-for-TV quality about it. I would say that this one is for hardcore Time Cop fans who just need to see more Time Cop. Number two, and a TV series. Yeah, there was actually a Time Cop TV series too, which I didn't even know about till making this episode. The series actually predates the sequel, with it airing in 1997, consisting of nine episodes being shown on ABC, despite the fact that there was meant to be 13 episodes, suggesting that the show didn't even make it through its first season run. And because the show came out in 1997, the future world was now 2007. It basically looks like what you'd expect it to, Time Cop on a prime time budget. The show didn't take off though and slipped into obscurity. Incidentally, some of the episodes were even directed by Peter Hymas, who directed the movie. However, despite this, the Time Cop TV series just wasn't pulling in the viewers and, for better or worse, was swiftly cancelled. Number one, it's become a cult classic. Despite making big money in the box office, the reviews for Time Cop weren't the best. I mean, it wasn't panned by any means, but there was a few niggles and gripes along the way. A lot of people compared it to The Terminator and Back to the Future and just agreed that it wasn't as good as either. Which I think is a bit harsh, as it should be seen on its own merit. Gene Siskel's big complaint of the movie is that you didn't get to see enough of Van Damme's nude body. The movie was also criticised for its flaws in its time travel logic. Despite all this though, there was however praises to Van Damme's acting, with it being agreed he gives off one of his better performances. The movie then quickly became forgotten until recent years where the movie has built up a much larger fan appreciation, with fans being able to look back fondly at Time Cop and it even made it on Entertainment Weekly's underrated movie list in 2010, proving that sometimes movies just need to be seen in past tense in order to be fully appreciated. Time Cop is just a fun, harmless, leave your brain at the door popcorn movie. Its time travel logic is flawed, but that doesn't take away from its enjoyability, as I don't think you're meant to question the quantum logic too much, and I think you're just meant to, you know, go with the spectacle of the movie. It's the perfect sit down and watch on a Sunday afternoon kind of film. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm going to visit myself in the past to tell myself to lay off the candy bars. See ya! Hey guys, it's Minty here, and today we're looking at the classic board game, Operation, where you get to operate on someone. Oh, and look at this. Press my nose. Well, let's see what happens when he presses his nose. Oh, gee whiz. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Oh, oh, Operation, what are you doing? Oh, there we go. So yes, today we are gonna open this up and we're gonna have a go. So finally, I can live out my dream of becoming a doctor. Right, so with that, let's open this up and play. Okay, so here we have our sick patient here who has all kinds of ailments in his body, some of which is really confusing. Like, okay, I can understand him getting an apple stuck there, but what the hell is a butterfly doing in his belly? What has this guy got against butterflies? Why is he eating butterflies? Why the hell has he got a horse in his leg? Why the hell has he got a bucket of water in his leg? Like, what the hell? What the heck is going on here? Dude, what is up with this? Why are you eating horses and buckets of water and getting them stuck in your leg? 
Also, some of the bits are actually missing. Like, this was a brand new game that I just got. And there's meant to be a bone here or something, and that's missing. And the pencil here is missing. Come on, Hasbro. Step up your game. What is this? And also, the guy here that we're operating on, I don't know, when I was a kid, I always thought he looked like that guy from Monty Python and the Meaning of Life. You know that really big dude who goes into the restaurant and explodes? Yeah, this totally looks like him. So anyway, let's see if I've got surgical hands and can operate and remove these objects from our patient here without getting zapped. Here we go. Oh! Oh! Well, I successfully removed his heart because, yeah, apparently for some reason we've got to remove this guy's heart because that makes lots of sense. Let's get the butterfly out there so the butterfly can be free. Oh, so close. Oh, damn it! Ugh. No. Uh, I definitely... Ugh! Uh, ugh! Ugh! I definitely don't have surgical hands, that's for sure. Ugh! I think that I think our patient here is a goner. Let's get this loaf of bread out of his crotch. Ugh. Ugh. I hate it when it vibrates like that. It's like the game is telling you off. It's like the game is going, Oi, what are you doing? And it makes me feel bad. Come on. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, uh, the loaf of bread is staying there. Listen, hopefully it'll just digest. Well guys, I don't know about you, but I sure had lots of fun. All I can say, it has not been a good day for our patient here. I have tried to get all these bits out of his body, and I have been zapping and zapping him. Alright, until next time, see yous!